Hi there, today I'm going to be giving a walkthrough of the Segment Customer Data Platform. And you can think of Segment like a switchboard or a router, where it's responsible for taking inputs from many different sources and then routing these inputs to many different destinations. And in this video today, I'm going to be showing you how Segment is set up with different sources and destinations. I'll be going through the different types of events in Segment. And I'll go through how to test events and debug delivery issues. If you want a recap of what a customer data platform is in marketing, then you can take a look at this blog post here. Or if you want to get stuck straight into the nitty gritty, you can take a look at how to set up a destination. And the example I use is the Marketo marketing automation platform and how you can set this up as a destination in segment. So you can check out this post to see how you might go about setting up an integration. So before diving into segment, I want to cover the different event types because these will be coming up later when we look at the source debugger. So there are six different event types. There's a page event for page views on your site. There's an identify event for when someone is identified on your site, when they fill out a form or when they sign into your portal. There's a track call, which are bespoke events that you can define and send to segment from the front end or the back end of your website. There's a screen, which is an event for when someone views a screen on your mobile app. There's a group, which is an event to associate a user with a group. And there's an alias, an event to merge two identities together. If you want more information, you can check out the segment spec overview that I linked to here. But now the next thing we're going to dive into is we're going to look at a source in segment. And the first thing we're going to look at is the source debugger. So let's take a look here. Let's go to a particular source. And I'll choose this production source here. And when we first land in here, we go to the overview page, and then we can see all the different destinations that are receiving information from this source. So now let's take a look at the debugger for the production source here. So when we go to the debugger, we can see all the events that are being sent to segment from this source. And if we go to advanced here, we can have different filters for whether we're looking for track calls, whether we're looking for just page events, screens, identify calls, groups, or aliases. So if I deselect all of these and just focus on track calls, we can see all the track calls, which we remember are the custom events we sent to segment. We can see all of these coming in from this production source. And if we click on one here, we can see a pretty, which is just a nice formatting of the payload that has been sent to segment. If we click the raw tab, it shows us absolutely everything that was sent to segment for this track call. And if we look at the integrations path here, this tells us all the destinations that are receiving information from segment for this event. So we can see that all the destinations are receiving it except for Marketo here. And I call this out in the blog post where you can explicitly state for each destination whether they should receive information from a particular source for a particular event. You can set it equal to true, false, and true explicitly for each destination. Or you can do what we just saw in the track call there where you specify a default and then you only need to specify the destinations that go against that default. And finally, the last part here I'll show you, and I'll go through this later on in this video, is how you can send one of these events to the event tester. So if you go to validate here, you can select a destination to send this event to. And if we go next, it brings us to the event tester within this destination. And I'll show you how we can use this event tester later on to make sure that this track call will be received correctly by the intended destination. So let's navigate back to that production source I was showing you earlier on because there's more I want to show you here. So one other thing I want to show you in the debugger quickly is if you go to advanced, as well as filtering, on the particular events. You can also filter on whether they were allowed to go to their intended destinations or if they were blocked. And you can also search for certain keywords here. So if you have a track call 
So for example, we can see that connection is coming up here a lot. If we want to filter for track calls containing the word connection, we can, do, we can just enter the keyword connection. And now we see that all the track calls that are containing the word connection or have connection in their payload will all appear here. And you can also search using uh, this bar at the top here. So you can do the exact same thing we just did there. Let's search for 2FA this time. So if we search for 2FA here at the top, we can see now that only events which have 2FA in their name or 2FA in their payload will appear here. And then you can also pause the debugger if you want, because if you don't pause it, the number of events in this window just keeps on increasing. However, you can pause it here to hold whatever events are in the window so that you can look through each event at your own pace without them disappearing. And the last search option that we have are these radio buttons here, whether we search for property values or the payload. You can mouse over this question mark here to get the definition, but I'll show you what this means. So when you have this set equal to property values and you search for a keyword, it will only search for that keyword within the values that are present in each of these properties. However, if you set this equal to full payload and you search for a keyword, Segment will search both the property names and the property values for that keyword. So that's the difference between these two options here. And the next thing we're gonna check out is the schema in segment. The schema gives a very good holistic overview of all the events that are coming into segment from a particular source. So in this case, we can see all the track calls coming into segment over the past seven days or the past 30 days using the drop down here. And then we can also switch to see all the identify calls being made and all the group calls being made. And then if we go back to the track call section here, underneath the graph, we can see all the events that have come into segment from this source in the past 30 days here. And if we click into a particular event, like the page view event here, we can see that it came in 1.19 million times over the past 30 days. And we can see all the property values that were present whenever this track call was sent to segment. So we can see that not all of these property values were present in every single track call. We can see that the name and the path were present in all 1.19 million of these track calls that were sent to segment, but we can see other parameters like this integrations Twitter ads were only present uh, some part of the time when this track call was sent to segment. So the schema in summary is a very good way to get a holistic view of all the events that are coming into segment from a particular source. And if we want to sort all these events, we can do so by either sorting by the event name. You just click on the header here and it'll sort by event name, or probably a more useful one is to sort by the number of track calls that were allowed. So here we can see the most frequently incoming track calls to segment from this source. And as I showed before, if you want any information on any of these events, you can click into them and then you can see how often all these parameters are present when these track calls come into segment. And if you want to search for a particular track call, so let's search for this saw alert one here. We can just search for keywords at the top. You can see saw alert. And then if we want, we can click in and find more information about all the properties that are incoming from this particular event. Okay, so now let's take a look at the event tester that I mentioned earlier on. So we're going to go to a particular destination here. I'm very familiar with the Marketo destination in segments. So this is the example I'll be using for this video. So when we're in the event tester, we have two different options for how we want to 
build the event we want to send. We can use the JSON option here where we first select the event type. And then once we've selected the event type, we just copy and paste in the JSON payload that we want to send to this destination. Or the second option we have is the event builder, where once again, we select which type of event it is. And then once we select which type of event, we can just specify all the properties and all the values of these properties here within the event builder. And as I showed before, probably one of the best ways to populate these is by searching for the event from a particular source in the debugger and then using the validate option. So let's search for, okay, none of those events are coming up. So let's search for another one. Let's just go modified number here, use this, and then click the validate option here in the top right-hand corner, and then select the destination. So in this case, we are going to search for Marketo V2, go next. And we can see that segment has pasted in the payload for this event for us in the event tester window. So then all we have to do is click the send test event to see the event lifecycle of how this event gets sent to the Marketo destination. So let's send this event to the Marketo destination. And then we can see that the event lifecycle window gets populated. And in the top right-hand corner here, we can see that there are three events that we can paginate through. And in each event, there is a request that segment makes, and then there is a response from the destination. So for the Marketo destination, the first request that segment makes in the first event is it requests the authentication credentials from Marketo so that it is able to send it the track call via API. And then Marketo sends back the authentication credentials that segment needs to send the track call to Marketo. Then in the second event here, segment makes a request to get the ID it needs to update this person with this event in Marketo. So then here we specify the email address, which is tyronatelnext.com, and segment uses this to look up the person in Marketo. And then Marketo returns the lead ID for this email address. And then segment uses this email ID in the third and final event. It uses this email, it uses this lead ID to send this track call and this event to Marketo for this person. And then the final response is Marketo just lets segment know, okay, I received your request to send that track call to Marketo for that person with that lead ID. And that's how we can use the event lifecycle to witness all the events that take place when we send a track call to a destination. And in each event, as I've showed you, we can see the request that segment makes and the response that we get from the destination. So now let's take a look at the event delivery tab here. So you can see that you can set up delivery alerts here for when this destination's delivery rate drops below a certain threshold. But the important things to look at here are the delivery summary. So we can set the time window we are interested in from 10 minutes up to two weeks. So then we can see all the events that were delivered on the first try, those that were delivered on retry, and the number of failed events. And we can also see the average latency over this time. And then in the delivery trends graph, we can see how these different values change over time, the amount that were delivered on the first try, on retry, and all the failed events. And we can see how this fluctuates over time. So you might notice certain patterns when segment could be overloaded and the number of failed events spikes, or maybe the latency spikes at certain times. Like here, we can see a big spike in latency because there are probably a lot of events being sent to segment on this day. So you can use this graph here for debugging uh, when errors are most present and finding patterns to help you in your debugging. 
And then underneath here, you can click into particular delivery issues that have occurred over this time period. And if you click into a particular issue, it will bring up a maximum of 20 instances of this delivery issue. So you can see what was sent to segment. We can see the request segment made to the destination. And then we can see the response from that destination. And we can do this for each of the instances of this delivery issue. So therefore you can use this for debugging what is going wrong and put a fix in place. And if you do want to test out changes you make to the payloads you're sending to segment, well then you can use the event tester that I showed you earlier on in this video to take those payloads, paste them into the event tester, and then send them to the destination to see what the event lifecycle looks like to make sure everything is working correctly. The final thing I want to show you guys are filters that you can set up on each destination. And when you're setting up a filter, the different options you have are, you can set up filters to not send certain events to Marketo. You can set up filters so that only certain events go to Marketo, or you can set up filters so that only particular fields are sent to Marketo when a particular track call or event comes into segment. So looking at a simple example here, do not send this event to Marketo V2 if the event name contains something. So let's load in an event here from production that we can use for testing. So in this event, we can see it contains connection. So let's put in connection. So do not send this event to Marketo if the event name contains connection. Let's test the event. And we can see that this event will be sent to Marketo because I believe this is case sensitive. So if we try this again and we go test event, we can see this event will not be sent to Marketo V2. So that's a very good lesson here when using this event name contains, it is case sensitive. So if we change this now to contains just something like Tyron and we go to test event, we can see that this event will be sent to Marketo V2. So this is just a very simple example of how you can set up filters for the events going to a particular destination. And this brings me to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful. And if you want to take your segment knowledge further, you can recap the difference between what a customer data platform is and what a marketing automation platform is with this blog post here. And if you want to take a look at how to set up a destination in segment, I go through an example and the example I use is how you can set up the Marketo destination within segment and configure custom activities and custom fields with this integration. So you can take a look at this blog post here if you want to take your segment knowledge further. And as always, if you found this blog post, sorry, as always, if you found this video helpful, then please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments on the video. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, then please subscribe. Have a great day.